Hey, and welcome back to another Revit video. And in this video, we're going to look at revisions once again. But in this video, we're going to look at kind of more of the customizing them a little bit more. We're going to look at the customizing the clouds, things that we can do with the clouds, the tags, as well as how I organize my revisions when it comes to printing and issuing a set and issuing revisions because, you know, you could figure it out on your own, like how you need to go print each one and determine which sheets have revisions on them per for a particular issue. All of that's going to be covered in this video. So if you happen to learn something or just end up liking the video, please demolish that like button. It really helps. Please do that. All right. So here we are. I would highly recommend first that you look at the previous two revision videos that I've made, which cover really the overview of revisions in general, everything that you might want to do as far as creating revisions, using them and everything, why and all that. And the second video was a good one, numbering and whether it's organized, whether you're organizing your revisions per project or per sheet. That's very important to know and understand the impact on one versus the other. So check out those two very much before this one. But all we're going to do this video is look at customizing these clouds. So, you know, honestly, there's not a lot that I like to do to the clouds. You know, there's a couple of things that we can do to customize. Well, we can customize this arc link, which we looked at in the first video. I can just change this number to really anything. It'll change the look of the cloud pretty significantly. Like if I want to make this an inch and a quarter, well, then they're giant clouds. So it really, this is up to you. But I will say I have never needed to change that because I'm happy with the way it looks. It just, it's fine. It covers the basis for what I need. I don't have views that are so small that it would look like one giant circle. I don't have that. So change that if you need to. But what I like to do, again, it's very simple. We're going to just change the color. So what we can do is just you know change the color of the clouds and the tags. And I want to make it a red because I want it to jump out of you. I mean, most of the content in Revit is either a white sheet, <laughs> of course, or, or all these black lines, pochets, you name it. There are some colors here and there, but when it comes to documenting and like issuing sheets to contractors, yeah, a lot of times it's just black and white. And a lot of times you're printing in black and white. Maybe you need to physically print. It's probably black and white, especially for these large sheets. So given that, I really want these revision clouds to stand out. And I say that because I'm primarily looking at PDFs. I'm primarily marking up on PDFs. And everything, again, like I just said, is black and white. So I want these revision clouds to stand out. It's really important to me that they do. And for my projects, this is what I like to do. Well, we can always come in here, of course, not to the view, but to the clouds where I have them. And we can always come to override the element and we can do just this thing. We can color it red and then be done with it. Okay. There you go. It's red. Now the problem is you have to do that for every cloud. And I would ne never recommend that. So I'm even in a way now regretting showing you that. <laughs> so how would we do that as far as taking care of all my clouds. Like I want them to be all red. I don't want to have to worry about it ever again. Well, you would think that it's, it's a falling into like the visibility graphics. And because if I come into my visibility graphics here, I can see on my annotations, I do have revision clouds. Okay. Well, that seems easy enough. Well, how would we do that? Well, we could do the exact same thing that we did before. Make it red. We hit okay. And then boom, that red. Well, okay. Well, what happens if I go to 201 here? Well, you know, my revision cloud, unfortunately, is still black. And that's because I only change it for that one view, or I only change it in that view template. So what the heck? How do we deal with that? Well, let's go back to my sheet here, and I'm going to undo this because, again, there's a better way. <laughs> I'm showing you the different options and ways that you could do this, but if you want to do it globally, like I'd recommend it, like I do it, then I would do it this way. So visibility graphics, view templates, those are all per view or per views that have those templates applied. Now, how would we make this project wide? Well, that is in fact going to be object styles. So in the manage tab, you have object styles over here at the left. Object styles are going to look very similar to visibility graphics. And in fact, if you click visibility graphics in any view, you can jump straight to the object styles. And these object styles are the styles for all objects in your project. Be aware of that because this is project wide. So if you want any of these to not be black, maybe you don't want your walls to default black, well then change it here. It'll change them everywhere. But I don't want to do that, of course. I want to go to my annotations and I want to go specifically to Rev Revit, not Revit, 
revision clouds, and then revision tags. Look, look right here, black becomes red, and then revision cloud tags, black becomes red. Okay, then I hit okay here, and then boom, my clouds and my tags are red. And if I come over to 201, <laughs> there it is. My clouds and tags are red. Now you might be asking, well, what about the tags? Your your text is black. What do I do? Well, of course, it's as simple as editing the family for the tag. And it doesn't matter what kind of tag family you have. It probably has some sort of text in it. And as simple as this. There's my text. I'll edit the type. Boom, this becomes red. And then we move on with our day, load it back into the project. I don't need to save it. And then once I do this, everywhere in the project, I now have a red cloud, red tag. It looks great. It jumps out at you. It tells you where it is. Like before, maybe I couldn't find the tags. Well, clearly they are there. They're the tags. They're the clouds. Cool. Okay. This is how, that's how we customize the look. And again, this is not a big deal, but this is a personal preference of mine. I like the way it looks. Okay. So how would you organize your revisions in such a way where you could see everything that's within one revision and have basically to help you determine and track what sheets are a part of one revision, maybe for the purposes of printing or just referring to what sheets are a part of which revision. Well, we can make a sheet list and that's great. I like sheet lists a lot and you can find those of course under the scheduled and quantities under sheet lists. There we go. So by default we have sheet lists, which is going to list all your sheets, but I want to go to view and then schedules and then sheet list. There we go. And so you're going to have as many parameters that you've made that would apply to sheets here. And, but we're, what do we really care about? Well, in my case, I care about the sheet name and number. Okay. So let's pull those over because we need to find what sheet and name and number it is. So number first, then the name, but then I want to immediately jump to something about revisions. Of course, that's what we're talking about. But if you scroll up here, we could see, look at this. We have current revision, current revision date. Look at this. Okay. Cool. All right. And so I have current revision and revision date. Well, I definitely want to make sure I have the date. I definitely want to make sure I have the revision itself. And then I have my current revision description. Okay. Well, in fact, I don't really need the current revision because current revision is just one, two, three, four, you know, however you've decided to number them. So what we're going to end up having here is current revision date and then the description. So the description itself if you remember from the last video, it's whatever you call it. Of course, it, by default, it's revision one, it's revision two, three, whatever. Or it's associated to an issue, whether it's RFI one, four, ASR two, three, whatever it is. And so I want to make sure I'm sorting this way. So coming up here to filter, I, right now I don't need to filter by anything yet, but we will get there in a moment. Sorting, I want to make sure I'm sorting, you know, just by the, the sheet number. So that just makes sense. And I want to make sure to itemize every instance. So we'll click OK. And my guess is this is going to be not what we're looking for. <laughs> it really is not yet. It is getting there. And so what can we do at this point? Well, you know, we're, we're getting there in a sense that I see everything with revision 5. And I see everything with my, of course, the date of revision 5. And then my sheets that are associated to revision 5. So, so far, this is so good. You know, it's kind of, t it's telling me what I want, but how can I organize this in a, a bit of a better way? Well, let's come over here to my revisions and I, I just want to call revision five, maybe RFI two. And j just so we have something that is called. And so we're tracking that. So RFI two, I don't necessarily need all this to show up there. So let's, let's try and organize this a better way. Going to sorting. Let's go ahead and add and add a header. And we don't want our header to be the sheet number, but we want our header to be the current revision description. So I, you know, I want this to be RFI2. So I can make that a header and then press OK. And look, there's RFI2. Cool. I don't like the way this is organized yet, but we can figure that out in just a second. So I want to make sure that in the format, I come over to my current revision description, which is, you know, my RFI2. And I just want to hide that because I don't need to see it. And that gives us you know, all right, everything's RFI under two, RFI number two, everything's under that. So how do we make all of that under RFI two only? So to have all of these show up under RFI number two and have, instead of having them each under their own RFI two, I can come into sorting and just make sure that we sort first under current revision description. Okay. And then we make that our header. And then I will instead second make my sorting be under sheet number. 
click OK, and then there we go. So everything's all under RFI2. And then now we can honestly do the same thing with the date. I can come in here, I can just hide the date column, and then go ahead and make sure that my date is what I'm sorting by next, and then make that a header. Look at that, right there. But this does the same thing as before. So we, again, we just need to switch these two around. So there's my date, and then there's my number. Make my revision date the header, and then there we go. Okay, cool. So what is this telling us? This is telling us, and I'll rename this to revisions, which is exactly what I like to do. So now we can see we have a schedule called revision over here in my sheet list. Very cool. So this is telling me that under RFI2, that's being issued on this date, these are all of the sheets that are associated to it. That's kind of cool. Okay, and so you know maybe there's more we, we could look to add, which probably not. If you end up using the current revision or if you end up using the issued two or whatever, then you can there. But, you know, issued is nice. We could determine if it's issued or not, which, you know, whatever. This is telling me no. And so as soon as I change this to issued, it'll go to yes. So I, that's not a huge deal for me to be able to see. But, you know, you could use this. You could still show it. But, of course, maybe what I want to do with this is even go ahead and make sure my issue, whether it's issued or not, is showing there. And so... There it is simply, no. And so what is this now telling me? This is telling me that RFI number two on this date is not issued, and then here are all the sheets associated to it. You could do it this way. I like this a lot too. Okay, and so let's put in one more thing. So maybe we determine, you know, of course I'm in, this is issue five or whatever, or issue number five. You know, we could do that if we want to. You can add that up to the top if you really want to. I don't know if that's necessary. I don't think it is, but... Something that's nice is that I can decide to filter. Maybe I want to filter by my actual type or like the name of my particular issuance and my revision. So, well, I can see RFI2 there. Cool. So I hit OK, and then, yeah, that's all I get. Now, what I'm going to do for the sake of this video is come back into View, Revisions, and let's just unissue these sheets or un unissue these revisions. Okay, nothing happened here, but this is, this is really great. So maybe this revision is not necessarily a part of all, of course, it's not a part of the other revisions, but maybe this revision is now done and we need to work on another revision. I have looked at all of these and now I can come into my filter and all I need to do is once I've made another one, let's, let's say in this case, I do make another one. We'll go ahead and add one more and call this revision six and I'll do this RFI number three. Okay. And then we'll have the date be on the fifth. Cool. Hit okay to RFI number three. Well, and we don't see RFI number three, and why is that? Well, pff, we actually don't have RFI number three or that particular revision showing up on a sheet. Like, it doesn't exist in the project yet. So let's go ahead and make that exist. So we'll go here, and we can see that, you know, I need to make that actually RFI number three. And then we can tag it just so we make sure that it's tagged. And we can come back to our revision schedule. And then we can see, well, okay, whoa, what's what's happening here? Well, we have we now have all these showing up at once. Well, I don't necessarily want that. That's because my sorting's off. So let's go ahead and make sure our sorting is on, of course, to my current description, which equals, now there's both, RFI 2 and 3. Now you might say, well, what the heck happened to the rest? If I click OK, I can see there's my one sheet. This is kind of weird and unfortunate and also kind of bizarre, but... Whenever I go back to my revisions, you can see, well, they're not, like, none of these are issued. I can even unissue this. None of these are issued, but I can't see that they're populated there. Now, why is that? Well, the reason, <laughs> the reason is, and this is just what I found, is after this schedule was created, every revision after that will appear in the filter. But every revision that was there prior to this revision schedule existing will not show up in the filters. I don't understand that. Maybe I'm missing something that baffles me as to why that would be the case. But if I'm wrong or you discovered otherwise, leave that in the comment section below. Like literally make a new schedule after you have some revisions and see if they populate. I don't know. But nonetheless, let's say we want to have another one populate. You know, we can go and add a fourth one. So we can have this one to 03, you know, 06. There we go. And I want to name this, you know, RFI4, whatever. That's fine. Okay, and then there we go. So let's go ahead and add this to a sheet. So really any sheet, doesn't matter for the sake of this video. I'll add it here. There we go. Let's go ahead and tag it. There we are. And so now we look over here, we can see there's RFI 1, 
N2. And now we need, of course, we need to change this because it's like the most, I have all these unissued, so let's change it to four. So we have one, two, and four. There, there we go. So now let's go back to our schedule. And if we go back to filter, we can see that we have two and four to choose from. Cool. So at this point, I'll change this to RFI4. I'll click OK. And you can see that not only does RFI4 update there with the date and the, the fact that it's not issued, but there is my sheet that that particular revision is now on. I just added it there. Very cool. And of course, if I want to issue this, I can see that, OK, I'll issue it there. Click OK. And then that no changes to yes. And so I'm good. And so the, what's the point of all this? Well, I use this to show you know, and track my revisions per you know, issue. And so we're going to issue one, one whole set or, or, or at least these documents that are for each revision. And so maybe we get to the point where, okay, you know, the current revision is now actually revision two, you know, RFI two. And so we care about what's here. So let's go ahead and make sure we unissue this sheet. Look, okay. And so we've got these couple sheets that are a part of RFI two easy. Okay. And so really all I need to do is refer back to this schedule before I print these sheets, you know? And so, you know, if you're familiar with printing, then I would probably come down here to a, a plot set. I'll uncheck views and then I could see, okay, well, you know, what I, what I really care about is now choosing which one of the sheets to print. Well, in this case, I'll look here and see, okay, well, that sheet, the site plan and the floor plan. Okay, I'll just check those two. I'll save, the, probably save this as, you know, revision, revisions, okay? And so basically every time I, I need to print from, you know, for an RFI, for a particular revision, I can save my plot set here under the revisions and then hit OK. And like I can just print them all that way and they're all they're going to print all of these sheets. That's so easy. So again, you can customize this however you want. If you want to if you want to show more, if you want to show the revision number itself or if you use the issued to or issued by parameters, anything like that. You can always add more here. I don't necessarily see a reason why if you want to count the sheets or, you know, if it gets insane, you can you can do all of that. Sort any different way that you want. But these are things that I like to be able to see to know if it's issued, what it's called, and the date, as well as all the sheets that are associated to that particular revision. Very cool. So if you like this video or happen to learn something, which I sure hope you did, please demolish that like button. It really helps me out a lot. Also tells me that you did learn something. So that will do it for revisions. We've, we've covered quite a lot. I would recommend you watch the overview video if you haven't. It covers everything with the revisions itself. And then the second revisions video, the really good one, is everything about project or per sheet revisions, how you organize all your revisions. So check those out as well if you haven't already. So thank you very much for watching. This is Revisions. Hope you enjoyed it. Have a wonderful day, and thank you for watching.